And my next guest says it should cut a lot more than $1.2 trillion over the next decade. He's Senator Mike Crapo, and he wants to triple that. He's a Republican from Idaho. If they can't get to $1.2 trillion, sir, how could they triple it? Well, actually, I think a bigger deal is easier to achieve. And the reason I say that is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, reaching $1.2 trillion really doesn't require you to make a lot of the bigger compromises and reform the tax code and reform the entitlement system that we really need to do. If we go big and go at least to $4 trillion and, frankly, more than $4 trillion, that gives you the ability to put together the reforms that are necessary on both the revenue side as well as the entitlement side of our fiscal policy and truly get America's fiscal policy redirected. You know, that's an interesting case you're making. So you're saying $1.2 trillion would not force the government's hand to uh, reform Social Security, which is needed, and reform of Medicaid and Medicare. Is that your argument? Yeah, that's exactly right. You can get $1.2 trillion of savings really just by working around the margins and doing some of the things that are very easy to do, keeping our current fiscal policy in place. You can't get to four, five, and six trillion dollars in savings without truly looking at America's fiscal policy, reforming our spending habits, putting enforcement mechanisms in place, reforming our tax code, and generating a much more competitive economy, and reforming the structure of our entitlement system. And those are the kinds of things that we really need to do now. That's why many of us are getting together. There's over 100 House members, over 46 senators now, who are coming together and saying to the super committee, we've got your back. If you will go big and do the kinds of complete uh, fiscal overhauls that we need in each part of our budget, then we'll back you. Yes, Senator, we've got, you're talking $360 billion a year, right? If you triple it, $3.6 uh, trillion over the next decade is what you're advocating uh, in cuts for the super debt committee. Yes. And the triggers would be $1.2 trillion. Uh, you know, we, when you go through line items in the budget, $1.2 trillion over 10 years is $120 billion a year. And me and, and my staff and I, we were looking at it. I mean, $80 billion in uh, green energy stimulus money uh, in, in 2009, that just about covers 120. And then you got Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac getting $141 billion. This is, these are seem like small amounts when you break it down year to year. Is $360 billion a year, though, doable? Oh, definitely it's doable. You know, the gang of six that I worked with put forward a plan that achieves it. There are several other plans, like the Domenici Riven, uh, Rivlin plan that has come out that would do it. But getting to 1.2 is not that hard. Uh, getting to 3.6 uh, 3 or even $4 trillion requires some serious compromise and some serious fiscal policy change. But that's doable as well. We can do this. Senator the Crapo, problem is not. Yeah. Go ahead, finish your thought. Well, I was just going to say the problem is not figuring out how to do it. The problem is getting the political willpower to do it and bridging those gridlock differences that we face in Congress right now. But you know, now. the danger is you can run out of political capital faster than you can run out of things to find to, to tax. And yeah. that's a danger for the government. But, sir, you know, here's the issue with the Super Debt Committee. I mean, the American people in 2000 said, you know what, no longer a big government agenda. We don't want it. It's not working. We've added three and a half trillion. We know we had to fill holes in the U.S. economy. But, you know, when you see how it played out, I don't think the American people are buying it. They're not saying, hey, they're saying essentially, hey, this, this didn't work. Oh, you're absolutely right. And your comments that you made earlier about how the markets will react and how the public will react if Congress once again results in gridlock when we have such an incredible opportunity are right on. I mean, the fact is we've added $4 trillion of debt in just the last three years. And we have not yet stopped the growth of government. Uh, the, the real approach that we ought to take here, similar okay. to what we've taken in the Gang of Six, is about a three to one ratio of spending cuts to revenue. And the revenue should come from a growth program that reforms the tax code and grows our economy. All right, Senator, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, sir. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you.